Hi, this is Sonia Doswell. We'd like to welcome you to Solmanad, where all things are possible. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been on. We've been extremely busy, but I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to join us today. We are here in Seattle, Washington, for the purpose of attending the Lenny Wilkins Celebrity Classic event, uh, one that I try to get to every year. However, this year, uh, oh, there's a little bit of a change that I'll be conducting interviews on the red carpet for the uh, dinner and auction taking place here at the Hyatt in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, which is a suburb of Seattle. It'll take place here tomorrow night. We have several celebrities that are in town, um, lots of people that have just led uh, very unique and fascinating lives, and so I've invited a few of them to come and, and join us today and uh, just talk a little bit about um, their lives, uh, their careers, and their involvement with Lenny Wilkins and the Foundation. So first of all, we'd like to go ahead and welcome Stock Pierce. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> Glad you're here. So when did you fly in? I flew in about 1 o'clock this morning. This morning? Yes. Oh, my. And so you even got some shut-eye, right? I tried. <laughs> and I had someone to wake me up this morning, but that's okay. <laughs> well, then thank you very much for joining us. You going to be well rested for the VIP reception tonight? I hope to be, yes. <laughs> I'm sure you will. So um, shall I call you Stack or Mr. Pierce? Stack is fine. Stack works, huh? Yes. Where'd you get that name? Uh, that's a long story. We don't have time. We don't have. How about, no. a, how about a short version? Can you just give us an abbreviated version? Uh, it was picked out of a basket. Okay, that works. We'll go with it. Stack out of a basket. <laughs> that works. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. So, have you ever been here in uh, Seattle before, aside from the Lenny Wilkins events? Uh, yes. Okay. I, uh, I came here some years ago to uh, do a project and. Uh, we got rained out every day. In Seattle? You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got rained out every day. You did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about a project, uh, your profession is uh, an actor, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I was here to do a film, and uh, we uh, was rained out every day, so we went back home. Oh, no. Yeah. Were you ever, ever able to come back, or did you just shoot elsewhere? Uh, they came back, but I was doing another project, so mm. I couldn't come back. Mm -hmm. Yes, it tends to rain a little bit here in Seattle, but not today. Look at the beautiful it's, sun it's outside. Nice, you know, it's nice blue skies. And it's gorgeous, isn't nice it? Nice people walking around. And, yes. Uh, it's very nice. Indeed. <laughs> so can we talk a little bit about your career? Sure. When, uh, when did you know that you wanted to become an actor? I didn't know. My, uh, my late wife is the one who made that decision. Uh-huh. She saw that gift in you? I have no idea. <laughs> But uh, I had a mailman who was doing small theater in a little city called Torrance. Mm -hmm. And so he brought a play by for me to read because at the time I was built very well like an ex-athlete. Mm -hmm. so he says, hey, but I want you to read this. And so I read it and I didn't like the play because of one scene. And I said, no, I didn't want to do it. And so my wife read the play and she said, this is good. Why don't you try it? You know, and so she's always told me what to do. Right. And so I did the play, and mm -hmm. uh, that play led to uh, going to an acting school at Columbia Studios, and uh, I was an actor for about 36, 37 years, I guess. So she knew you well, didn't she? Yes, I guess so. <laughs> and you're a man of wisdom to do exactly what the wife instructed you to do, right? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. And is your wife still with us? No, my wife passed away. Uh, some years ago. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure she'd be proud of you, huh? <laughs> well, I was proud of her yeah. because of the things that she could accomplish. And yes. So things were great. Mm -hmm. And do you have children? Yeah, I had three. I mm -hmm. had two daughters and a son, and my son passed away the year after my wife did. So oh, I just I'm have so two sorry. Daughters now, yeah. Two daughters and the grandbabies? Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen grandchildren? Yeah. Oh, my. You're a busy grandpa, aren't you? No, I was not busy. They were busy. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make to it clear. <laughs> yeah, I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. So can we go back and talk to us a little bit about your career? Sure. What are some of the projects uh, that you that you worked on in those uh, 37 years? Uh, I worked on Days of Our Lives, Nuts mm -hmm. Landing, um, Mannix. Uh, we did a show some years ago called V. I did that. Yes, uh, I remember. Mm -hmm. I played the role of Rockman, which was Muhammad Ali's brother when he did The Greatest. That's where Ali played himself. Mm -hmm. um, 
I did a play with Henry Fonda. And, uh, Let me just back up. What was it like to work with um, Ali? <laughs> it was something like that, that I would never see. Really? This guy was something to work with. I mean, he was always loose. He, uh, he did things that uh, no one else knew that he would do. Uh huh. Um, give us an example. I can't give you an example. Is he a prankster? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> but he had a lot of, you know, he had his cronies around and uh, sure. it was just, uh, it was just great to watch him to deal with children. Hmm. Uh, we went to a gym and um, and before we could start the shoot, the gym was full of kids. Oh. Hmm. And they were all over him. You know? Sure. And uh, he, uh, very friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, I never saw him turn his back on anyone. Mm -hmm. um, he knew his lines. Hmm. Um, he was just a great guy. So a professional inside and outside of the ring, huh? Yeah, he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, the last time I saw him uh, it was just after he started having the medical problem that he has. Sure. And. Uh, I was on an airplane, and so I saw him up front, and so I wrote a note and gave it to the attendant and asked her to give it to him, and he, mm -hmm. and he turned around and he looked at me, you know, and, and he stood up in the plane. And so I, I, had a, I had a line in the, play, in, in the film that said, uh, teach, brother, teach. Yeah. And he stood up and said, teach, brother, teach. <laughs> yes, you know, and he came back and we talked, you know, Aww. and uh, it was great for him to not to see me for quite a while and then to recognize me. Sure. Uh, that's pretty good, you know. Right. Um, there's, you know, some people in the business that mm -hmm. uh, they do and they do not. Yeah, he could have just sat there and snubbed yeah. you off. And said nothing, mm -hmm. you know. That's but, right. Uh, he was a, uh, He's a good guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said Henry Fonda you worked with. Yeah, I, I did a play called The Trial of a Lincoln, mm -hmm. and uh, we were on tour. And he, uh, another man that was friendly, um, my mother came to see every matinee. Everyone. Every matinee at my. the Huntington Humphrey Theater in L.A. Uh -huh. And I introduced my mother to Henry Fonda. And when we would come off the stage, she would be sitting in his dressing room talking to him. <laughs> when we were coming off, I'd say, hey, Mom, what are you doing? So I'd say, hey, we're having a good time. And that's just the way it was. You know? Because that was Mom. Yeah, huh? that was Mom. Aww. But he was, uh, he's a good man. He, uh, he went out one day, we were in Detroit, and he, uh, he went to a soul food dinner with us. Mm-hmm, um, Yes, and then a little girl came, and uh, he had four limousines, because there were there were 26 guys in the play, mm -hmm. and um, had four limousines, and all of us took us to watch Milton Berle. Really? And, and this is in Detroit? In Detroit. What year is this? This was about 1970. 1970. Yeah, 19, it was right after, the, uh, right after they tried to burn Detroit down. I was just about to ask about that, because yeah. I was trying to get the timeline mm -hmm. down. And, yeah, yeah, I thought it was, he was so. Hey, this guy was some, you know. Hmm. And he gave everyone in a play a gift. Hmm. Uh, he could have just kept himself. Yes, but he mm -hmm. was he was all over us. And we had rehearsal at the Greek Theater. And uh, during the uh, last week of rehearsal, he said, he said, I want all of you guys to understand that when we're on tour, you're with me. So don't worry about anything. Hmm. So that's wow. what he said to us. So, Generous. Uh, hey. Good man. Hmm. Yeah, good man. Good man. Yeah. I've always enjoyed watching him in any project that he was ever in. Oh, yeah. You know, it was strange for me to be able to watch certain people that had been working when I was a child and to find out that one day I'm going to be working with them. Right. What an you honor. Know, you know, so I, I felt good about mm -hmm. that, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then my, uh, my wife, she, uh, she kind of turn left on me because during the uh, during the Academy Awards she would always run home and almost get traffic tickets to get home to watch the Academy <laughs> Award. So then when I became a member of the Academy, I would get invitations to go to the Academy Awards. Sure. She, she never would go. She wouldn't go. No, she Just didn't. she'd prefer to sit home in front of the box watching. Yeah, her. I don't want to go. <laughs> so she never did. Huh. Yeah. Did you enjoy participating in this? You mean working as an actor? Well, no, in the Academy Awards. Well, you know, I um, I didn't participate. I, I was a member of the Academy. Sure. And so what happened is, is that 
they would send me uh, invitations to come to the Academy mm -hmm. Awards, uh, and that's that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, I never did anything else to to help them or not to help. Mm -hmm. them. I was just a member, mm -hmm. like most of us are. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's that's all I did. And so, uh, when we were talking prior to to uh, taping here, you had mentioned that some involvement in theater. Yes. Then, and so, uh, how did you uh, like being involved in theater? The whole, the whole relationship uh, there with the audience. And I enjoy theater a lot more and a lot better than I did working behind the film. Really? Yeah, because that way you have you're working for the audience. You know, right now we're working for that, the right. camera. You know, right. And uh, and then when if things happen, they just cut and mm -hmm. pick up from where you left off. And right. when you're dealing on stage, you're dealing with the people that are there with you. Mm -hmm. And I, I was taught that I would find someone that was like third or fourth row back, and mm -hmm. that's who I would work with. Mm -hmm. You know, I would work with that one person, right. and, uh, and that's how it worked for me. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed working theater better than I did film. And you mentioned that you had uh, involvement as a director then as well, huh? Yes, I was lucky enough to uh, be able to direct uh, three or four plays. Mm -hmm. And I directed them in um, San Diego, and uh, I directed one in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to um, I went to Philadelphia and directed a play So in Chicago, so that was good for me. So what was your greatest love in your whole career as an actor? I did a film called Cornbread Earl and Me. Cornbread Earl and Me? Yeah. What year was this? 1975, maybe. Mm -hmm. And what was the premise for this? Uh, I, I was the father of a young kid that was killed accidentally. Mm. And, the ki and this kid that I was the father of was an NBA basketball player. Huh. He had just graduated from UCLA, and he was signed by San Francisco. And uh, at the time, his name was Jamal Wilkes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you hear, you know him as uh, um, what's the boy's name now? He went, went from Keith Jamal Jamal Wilkes Jamal Wilkes. Jamal, what do yeah. you know him in? What else has he been in? His name was Keith. That's the only film that he did. Oh, huh. Yeah, that was the only one. Hmm. Uh, he did that film, and then he went back and played basketball. And so I was in uh, in San Francisco, uh, and I made contact with him, so I went to see him play. Aww. And he had me down in the uh, locker room with uh, all the players and uh -huh. all the guys. and. And I felt good about that. Oh, I'm sure. So, um, he really honored you. Oh, yeah. And every mm -hmm. time I, I would see him, he always called me, Hey, Dad, how you doing? You know, and, so, huh. and then I had a chance to meet his father. Aww. His father lived in Santa Barbara. Uh -huh. And his father was a minister. Uh -huh. And uh, I was there doing the film. So that worked out pretty good. Right. So I met his dad, and that was a good feeling. Huh. Yeah. I'll have to check out that movie then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cornbread Earl and Me. Okay. Yeah, that's... That's my that's my heart right there. Okay, I will check yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. And speaking of NBA players, let's talk a little bit about uh, why you're here today. So uh, you and Mr. Lenny Wilkins, you you go back a little bit. Yeah, we go back uh, when he was playing with the uh, St. Louis Hawks, mm -hmm. and I, I met him through my best friend <laughs> because he and Lenny knew each other in Brooklyn. Was this about '61? Maybe. 61, maybe? But he would know better than so. I. Is that right, uh -huh. right Tommy? Okay. About 61, yeah. okay. And so that's how I met Lenny. And through uh, Tommy, I've been staying in contact with him ever since. Mm -hmm. And the Lenny Wilkins Celebrity Classic event, which is uh, why we're all here this weekend, uh, how many years have you been coming? Since the first. The inception, mm -hmm. yeah. the first. Mm -hmm. You know, I interviewed Lenny a couple times on my talk show, and he was talking about having uh, their first dinner events back in the day when they were first getting them going, which brings a smile to your face as well. <laughs> I think the first tournament was played at Jefferson Park. Sure, yeah. yeah. Right there in Jefferson Park, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's how long I've been coming. Mm -hmm. Except, well, last year I wasn't here. But, mm -hmm. uh, and raising all these funds for the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic, isn't it just such a lovely cause? Well, I, I think it's it's one of the great causes that, I guess, is done by man. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, because you're dealing with kids that do not have the opportunity to get medical attention someplace else right. because they don't have the funds. Uh, and I say they don't have the funds because their parents are in a position where they don't have the money to mm-hmm. do it. And, and Lenny uh, started with started this with uh, Ms. Odessa Brown. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they're doing well, you know, and I hope that it can continue. Mm-hmm. And as long as I can come and be a part of with the guys that are coming to try to help them raise funds, I'll be here. Well, good, and we hope that you do continue yeah. to come back every year. Now, prior here, when we were cutting it up a little bit with the, the guys over there, you had mentioned that, that your golf game is over, but can we expect you to be there in, uh, in the cart on Saturday with, well, I'll, I'll with the guys? There. I'll be there. You'll be hanging yeah, out? I'll be there. Wonderful. I might swim a club, maybe one or two holes, but I'll be, I'll be there. <laughs> You know, there were some guys that, you know, there was one guy that taught me how to play, you know. <laughs> and then after I beat him a couple of times, he didn't want to play me anymore. Oh, really? Did, is it, does he need to remain nameless or? No, no, no. He's no, just no, 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 really he, close he, to He'll be sitting in my seat in a few seconds. In just a few seconds? Yeah. Hmm, well, we'll have to tune in and see yeah. then, huh? <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's my buddy. He's my, he's my, my best friend. Yeah. Yeah, and um, he and I go back a long time. Mm-hmm. So, are you still acting, or have you retired, or willing to come out for just the right project? No, what I did was I uh, I retired shortly after my wife passed, mm-hmm. and um, then I was we were raising a, a, one of my grandchildren, mm-hmm. and so when he went to uh, when he was born to play little league, I, I coached him to play little oh. league, and then when he went to high school, I became one of the coaches at the high school. Fantastic! What and city was this? Palm Desert, California, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't like politics, mm-hmm. and so when I saw the p- political thing coming into the process of trying to get these kids to play, yes, um, I backed off because I didn't want them to take anything out on my grandson that they had for me. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I uh, I coached until the year before he graduated, and I was offered a job. Mm-hmm. to go to another city to coach baseball at a private high school. Mm-hmm. So that's what I do now. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. How rewarding to work with the kids, huh? I love working with the kids. Yeah, I love yeah. working with the kids, yeah, too. I love working with them. They, they get on my nerves sometimes, but that's okay. It's part of it. Yeah. They're okay. supposed to. They're, they're still finding their way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's very strange because I, I found out who I am is that I didn't know that there's so many kids that run their household. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and, and everybody wonders, yep. why is it that our kids are acting the way they are? Mm-hmm. It's because their parents are allowing them to do certain things that if I even thought about doing, <laughs> you know, right. I'd get busted up, you know. Right. But uh, now they can't do that anymore. No. You know? but they should have had my mother as a parent. Oh, I tell you, go in the backyard and get a switch. No. I mean, if we even, if they even saw the whites of our eyes rolling our, that was it. You better not it, do that. You just, you know, don't even roll your eyes, let alone say no or snap back or anything, you know. <laughs> My mother said, if you roll your eyes at me, boy, I'll slap them in the next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. But, um, <laughs> that's what I like. I, I like doing that, and so I. Um, I'll leave here on Sunday and I'll go back and, and get back into football practice with the kids. Mm-hmm. And so um, I'm having a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Enjoying the ride. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just try to make sure that uh, whatever I do, I'm going to enjoy it to the fullest. Yes. Because I have not yet to hear anyone to tell me when they leave here how it was. Mm-hmm. You know, like you never see a Brinks truck follow a funeral. Right. So I just get it all while I can. That's and, right. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No regrets at the end of the day? None. Mm-mm. None. Mm-hmm. None. The only thing I hate is that thing is about uh, old age. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Some of that stuff you just can't, you just can't do anything about. No, you can't. Some of those know, issues. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stop you from griping about it, though. You know? No. Well, you've earned it. Oh, I feel pretty good. You've earned the platform. You want to great, great, hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but you're cool. working with the kids, and so yeah. that's keeping you young. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I run with them. 
Mm-hmm. And they look at me and they says, hey, coach, what are you doing? I says, I'm, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I do sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I beat them. But, I'm uh, sure you do. I feel it at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm in a tub soaking while they're out having a good time. Right. The whole yeah. box of Epsom salt, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, it's, uh, you know, it's great. And then again, it's... Uh, I, I've been there five years now, and, and to have some of the kids that have graduated, and then they come back, and and they come, they look for you, mm-hmm. you know, they look for you, you know. Um, I had uh, three kids to come back uh, this summer, and say, "Where's Coach Stack? Where's Coach Stack?" You know, and <laughs> and I, I could be in, in the workout room, and I can hear them all running down the hall trying to find me, you know. And so, Aww. And when I find them, that's great. And then to have some parents that say that, you know, I, I'm glad that you're here mm-hmm. because you are doing something for my son. And then I've had some parents say, you know, you're doing something for my son that his father couldn't do. Okay. You know, so mm-hmm. I say, hey, all you have to do is tell him the truth. Right. You know, and uh, don't, don't sugarcoat it, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I mean, Red is red and green is green, and mm-hmm. that's just the way it is, you know. And, right. And you have no, you have no reason to go out and think that you own the world when you have not made a contribution. Mm-hmm. You know, so and you, speaking of contributions, you truly are making a contribution in I try. in your community, and, I try. and how rewarding to know that you're making such a difference in their lives. I try. Yeah. I really do. You know, God gave you that platform to speak yeah. into their lives. But there's one thing that's tough. Hmm to be able to straighten one kid out and you cannot straighten your own. Yeah. You see, that's, you know, that's when it hurts sometimes. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but as long as you tell them the truth, you know, just mm-hmm. tell them the truth, whether they accept it or not, but you have to tell them the truth. Don't you think that's where faith has to come in? Yes. I mean, because you, you're doing all that you can do. That's right. But you have faith and believe, mm-hmm. you know, and... Uh, Walk by faith, not by sight, right? What you talking about? <laughs> well, <laughs> we can start with a little church in here, too, now. <laughs> Amen, sister. No, I understand, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's... And, and that's that's another thing that's, that's tough in schools. Um, even when I was in elementary school, we had... Uh, every Wednesday, we would go to church for religious instruction. Mm-hmm. Now they're talking about you can't even mention the word God. No, you cannot say Jesus. You cannot say I mean, God. Right. Don't that's you right. get on your knees? Oh, <laughs> you know, and, and then but yet and still, when they when they start spending money, they never really notice what's written on the dollar bill. And mm-hmm. what we want, and mm-hmm. God we trust. Mm-hmm. Yes. Come on, yeah. where are we? Mm-hmm. You know, are we uh, are we blowing smoke in our young kids, or what's going on? Right. And that's that's what mm-hmm. I see. And then when it comes to to try to straighten a kid out, and you're going to punish him, you say, "Well, you go to your room." Mm-hmm. Why well, send him to his room? <laughs> you have to be an engineer to operate all the stuff he has in his room. Right. <laughs> you know, but they don't take things from their kids that the kids love. Mm-hmm. Since you can't spank them, then take what the things from them. You know, right. Take the car. Something that matters. Take the cell phone. That's right. I remember we would get a restriction from uh, being able to talk on the phone, you know, the, with the long cord. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, I, I remember sometimes my mom would go to work and she would unplug it and take it out of the wall. Oh, wrap it up and take it to work I with her. Hey, well, see, well, see, that was fine with you, but see, we didn't, I didn't have a phone. Right. You know, we didn't have a phone. We had to go to the go to the corner or go, go to the gas station with a nickel. I had to go downstairs and use a lady's phone. We didn't have a phone. You know, my mother didn't get a phone until after I went to service and came out. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, but uh, it's just it's just crazy. And, uh, they, yeah, it's a different time, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they talk about uh, this guy did that, this guy did this. Why in the world can't all of us get together and do the right thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems pretty simple. It's quite basic. It's simple. And it is. It's about going back to the basics. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Well, are you looking forward to this weekend? Yes, I am. I'm yes. looking to go out there and see some of the other guys that I have not seen in a long time. Uh-huh. And I shall try and make an attempt to hit that little white ball as far as I can. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about that little white dimpled ball? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's a killer. <laughs> you know, it's a killer. You know, you find a guy that can stand up and hit a, hit a baseball coming 90 miles an hour, and he right. can hit a ball sitting still. Yeah, exactly. It, it's difficult. The game of millimeters, huh? Hey, it's difficult, yeah. <laughs> 
you don't, uh, if you don't uh, pay attention to yourself, you can't pay attention to anything else. Mm -hmm. that's, right. That's the way it is. You know? Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. How can how can some guys become a great hitter? And they try to tell someone else how to hit, and they cannot pay attention to themselves. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. how, how can I become a, a a great actor when I cannot pay attention to myself? Mm -hmm. I can't teach it if mm -hmm. I can't pay attention to myself. Right. Um, so get this straight first. No, you got to you got to pay attention to yourself <laughs> first. You mm -hmm. know, and, and that's what we don't do. Right. Yeah, we're too busy trying to. The pace, show, the show, pace nowadays. Show, show everybody how great we are. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, hey, great. What are you talking about? You better take care of yourself first. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope that you can come back and join us again, or if it's across the miles, maybe we can just Skype you in sometime. Thank you very much. Get a little update and, and see how things are going with the kids, and Thank uh, you. see if you made your way back out on the course with that little white ball or not. I plan to. I pray. Wonderful. <clears throat> it's next to my best friend. <laughs> That's right. I'm sure he'll have his way. Oh, yeah. He'll have his way. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us. No this is Sonia Doswell signing off from Soul Monade. We'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to join us here at Soul Monade, where we inhale love to exhale compassion. So whatever you put your hands to do in the coming week, be blessed, and we'll see you next time on Soul Monade. Ciao.